All right, so we've talked about how the right half of the brain and the left half of the brain have different jobs. Uh, now we're going to start to dig into uh, the pieces of the brain. Uh, and depending on the field you go into uh, or where you might see this knowledge, you're going to see these referred to uh, as different things. Uh, most of the time they're just uh, just names, right, that, uh, that are used that, uh, that can mean uh, different things. We're going to use three terms uh, that are going to be here. We've got what's called the hind brain, uh, and so the hind brain we're going to look at uh, really is probably what you've heard referred to as like the brain stem uh, and uh, that kind of area of the brain just right at the top of where your spinal cord uh, is going to uh, enter into your brain. Uh, we've got the midbrain, uh, which is kind of this uh, portion that's that's inside. Sometimes you hear it called the lower brain. And, uh, uh, and it's where a lot of kind of automatic functions uh, are taking place. Uh, and then you've got the forebrain, uh, what a lot of times people call the cerebral cortex. Uh, and the cerebral cortex is going to be where uh, a lot of the higher level functions uh, of the brain uh, are going to happen. So uh, what we're going to take a look at here uh, is the hindbrain. Uh, and then we'll have another lesson that looks at uh, the midbrain, and then the last one that looks at the cerebral cortex. Uh, as we're doing these things, you need to be able to label where these parts of the brain are. Uh, if I were to give you one of these diagrams, uh, you tell me, hey, this is where the cerebellum is, and you also need to tell me what that part does. Uh, and again, we're not going to get real in-depth with this. Uh, we're going to try and do it more uh, to where it's focused just on uh, things that are going to affect uh, the field of psychology. Uh, again, if you were going to be a neuroscientist, you're going to go into a lot more depth uh, with this than we would ever need to in an introductory psych course. But uh, let's take a look um, at the hindbrain. So a couple of different things that, uh, that are here for you. Um, we've got the spinal cord uh, you see coming up from, um, from obviously the, the spine. The spinal cord and the brain make up what are called your central nervous system. You probably remember that uh, from biology class, right? Just huge concentrations of nerves uh, and uh, the spinal cord's responsible really for carrying the signals from the, the outskirts of your body, the tips of your fingers, tips of your toes, uh, up to the brain uh, and then relaying those same signals coming down from the brain uh, down to uh, the other parts of the body. So you've got a central nervous system, you also have something called the peripheral nervous system, which is anything uh, that's not spain, or spain, anything that's not brain or spinal cord uh, are going to be there. So uh, that spinal cord, uh, as it comes up, obviously is uh, very important. Uh, my favorite, uh, favorite part of this part of the brain, just because it's fun to say, uh, is the medulla. Uh, and I like it because uh, its full name is the medulla oblongata. Uh, and the medulla oblongata uh, is responsible for, for a lot of things that you don't want to have to think about. Uh, while you're listening to me, while you're looking at this presentation, your heart's beating, uh, you're breathing, you're blinking. Uh, you don't have to think about doing any of that stuff. Uh, think about it. If you had to think about uh, your heart beating every time you wanted it to beat or to breathe in and out, that's all you would ever think about. You wouldn't have time uh, to play video games or read comic books or uh, listen to psychology lectures. Uh, and so uh, that medulla part of the brain uh, is extremely uh, important. Uh, it's it's going to keep you alive. Um, right up above there, uh, we see what are, is called the pons. Uh, and the pons has a couple of different names. Sometimes you see it referred to as the reticular activating system. Uh, the pons basically uh, is going to help determine how awake and aware you are. Uh, it's responsible for measuring your level of attention uh, and then of uh, deciding when to put the body to sleep. Now that's going to be important for us because we talk uh, in a little bit about uh, like sleep disorders and things like that. Uh, a lot of things, insomnia, narcolepsy, that type of stuff. Uh, this is a part of the brain uh, that's being affected uh, when, uh, when that's going on. I want you to think of it kind of like uh, what's going on in your laptops, right? Uh, if you are working with your laptop, but then you don't touch the keyboard for a while or the mouse, uh, the screen will uh, get dimmer. Uh, and then the computer will uh, eventually go into kind of sleep mode, 
right? You have to touch a, a key on the keyboard or touch the mouse pad to get it to start again. That's what's going on with the pawns, right? When you're up and active and doing things, uh, your pawns knows that uh, the body is is busy, right? And so you need to be active and aware. But the pawns is also responsible for making sure you get the rest you need. Uh, so when you get uh, when, when you get calm down, uh, when you're sitting still, it's quiet. Uh, then your brain looks and says, well, wait a minute, maybe this is a time where I could catch uh, catch up on some sleep. That can happen a lot of times if you're sitting in class, uh, maybe the lights go down, teacher's showing a movie, uh, or uh, somebody is uh, giving a lecture, and, and man, you had a, a really rough practice last night, you got up early this morning, and then all of a sudden your body's saying, hey, there's not a whole lot of activity going on here, um, let, let's go ahead and go to sleep. Uh, and so something's got to, um, got to fight against. Uh, obviously a little bit when you're wanting to learn. Uh, I remember being in college and there was, uh, I lived in a dorm the first year I was there and just down the hallway from my room was kind of our commons area, right? It was just this room, had a television, we'd have dorm floor meetings in there, but it had uh, tables and chairs and desks and things like that. Well, there was one chair in there that I swear was the most uncomfortable chair uh, that had ever been invented by mankind. But if I was tired and I needed to get through uh, a little reading from psychology or history, I could go sit in that chair and guarantee you I was not going to be comfortable enough uh, to go to sleep. Uh, and so uh, that's that's kind of what um, what the pawns is going to do. That thing that you see on the very back um, is kind of looks like a mini brain, especially when you see, uh, and you'll see later some pictures uh, of uh, different parts of the brain. That's called your cerebellum. And your cerebellum uh, fits right up uh, next to your spinal cord underneath uh, the back part of your brain. Lots of different jobs uh, that the cerebellum is going to have. Uh, I'm going to throw out three of them to you. Uh, one is uh, the cerebellum is in charge uh, of or involved in balance uh, and your, your balance as a person. So uh, which one of the things you're going to see is if you're a pretty athletic person, usually you have a, a pretty high functioning cerebellum. But balance is one of the things that, uh, that the cerebellum uh, is going to take care of. Uh, the cerebellum also uh, recognizes patterns. So those of you uh, who are a little more musical, uh, especially if you've got rhythm, that type of thing, um, the cerebellum uh, can can be responsible for that. It can also be responsible for replicating uh, movement uh, again and again. And so, um, you know, one of the things I, I said in the intro video was that, uh, that I, I practice Taekwondo. Uh, and so as we advance uh, up uh, the ranking system in Taekwondo, we have to learn forms. And so forms are just a series of different movements uh, that we have to learn. And so uh, when you first start to learn a form, it um, you, you feel really awkward and uncoordinated because you don't know where you're supposed to move your body. But the more and more you do it, it becomes second nature. Uh, and so what's going on is I don't have to think about it anymore. It's, it's more what people refer to a lot of times as muscle memory. Uh, and so that's with the cerebellum. You can you can see this in all kinds of different places. One of the things I like the best is uh, with the marching band kids. Uh, as the marching band kids go through uh, their season, uh, you'll see them in the hallways. You can always tell the kids that are in a marching band together because when they're walking in the hallways during passing periods, they will naturally fall into step uh, with each other because they've practiced that so many times that even without noticing uh, what they're doing, they'll fall into step uh, with somebody else uh, that uh, that is in the marching band. Uh, the other thing the cerebellum does is what's called tracking. Uh, tracking is the idea, if you've ever played catch, uh, tracking helps you determine how fast something's coming at you, what the angle is, where you need to move your hands uh, if you are going to catch it. So again, a cerebellum uh, would be very important for a guy like um, Antonio Brown or um, you know some of these other fantastic uh, NFL receivers uh, that are out there, Michael Thomas, uh, T.Y. Hilton of the Colts, uh, those guys need to be able to to measure those sorts of things uh, to figure out where to put their hands, right, to catch those footballs uh, on Sundays. And so uh, that's another thing that the cerebellum uh, would be in charge of. Cerebellum and the pawns are two parts of your brain that are greatly affected by alcohol use. Uh, and so uh, if you've ever seen on, on television or in a movie one of those sobriety tests where police officers will have you walk a line, uh, that's because they know that alcohol, and if you've, you've, uh, 
you've taken alcohol will mess with uh, your ability to do some of these things. That's why it's dangerous to get behind the wheel uh, after you've uh, drank, just because you, you, uh, you, you're not as quick on the reaction times uh, as you would be uh, if you weren't under that influence. So um, that's the, the hind brain. That's this little part underneath. Uh, so just really three parts there, uh, the medulla oblongata, the pons, and the cerebellum. There's an awful lot. Uh, that's going on uh, in these parts. And so next time out, uh, we will tackle the midbrain or lower brain.